right, part two of the uh, presentation is uh, Dave Waldman. Dave Waldman is going to tell us about Mike checking. Yes. We're going to check them. We're going to count them. We're going to count Mike. But, but uh, the interesting uh, approach here is we're trying to get people to consider alternatives to the fully lethal alcohol wash, which is the gold standard now. How many of you have done an alcohol wash? How many of you have bees but haven't done anything to check your mice? Okay, so there's a handful. Okay, so we're coming up on the season, April and May, when you want to get an idea of among your overwintered bees, what your population is so you can figure out um, what you're dealing with. And we're going to talk about, this is not about treatment, this is literally a technique to count mites based on some research I've been doing on a Danish system that uses carbon dioxide gas instead of alcohol, so it puts the bees to sleep. And if you inadvertently put the queen in there where you would lose her in the alcohol, you won't lose her with the CO2 because she'll wake up. So it's an interesting technique. Um, I've been in contact with Randy Oliver. Any of you know scientific beekeeping and Randy Oliver? He's a California beekeeper who is a scientist and he's very well published and very well respected in the community. And he and I have become acquaintances and friends of sort over the last year or two. And um, I gave him preliminary research that Charlie and Adele and I did in Charlie's bee yard this fall turned it over to Randy and asked him if he'd be interested in revisiting what we did but turning it into a full-blown scientific experiment with data collection. He agreed to do it and the article just came out today in the yeah. April issue of the American Bee Journal. Yeah. So what we're talking about today was just published. Hot off the press. Um, so here we go. Um, let's keep it informal. If someone has no idea what I'm talking about, don't be shy, ask me, because I want to be sure that you walk away understanding what we're talking about. Uh, but we're going to move kind of quickly, because I think we have to get out of here in a little bit. Uh, next slide, please. So alcohol wash is the gold standard. Any of you know who the BIP is, the Be Informed Partnership? Um, they're a group who, among other things, are very committed in their research capacity to maintaining um, national data on Varroa management and Varroa statistics and colony loss. Um, they have a somewhat tedious but important, and I encourage you to participate, um, online form that might take you 15, 20 minutes where you go through um, your bee yard or your, or your backyard or whatever level you are and tell them what you did, when you did it, what you treated with, whether it was apivar, mite away, oxalic acid, whatever. Um, and you tell them your statistics so they can aggregate them and come up with some idea, trend setting. And it's the information that winds up being used by researchers, but also becomes important for us as practitioners to understand what chemicals aren't working well this year, what chemicals to stay away from because they're killing our bees. Um, alcohol wash um, is deemed at this point to be 85% effective. And when we talk about effectiveness, we're talking about um, how the, the percentage of mites that the washing method, or in this case, the CO2 method, captures. So we'll talk about the technique to throw the bees into a container to capture them. Um, and, the, and you measure the effectiveness, what we call the efficacy of the technique, based on how many of the mites that you actually caught you can observe. Everybody with me? So if something's 50% effective, that means you're only seeing perhaps half of the mites that you've collected. Whereas if something's 85% effective, that means you've captured, of, of the mites that you captured, you can actually see 85%. And the way that you determine that is that at least once you meticulously count each bee um, okay. with tweezers and a hemostat and maybe a loop if you want, and you make sure that you haven't missed any of them. And then the percentage you captured based on the percentage present is your degree of efficacy. Um, so um, sugar roll is something that 
I don't recommend we've been, we should be using anymore. That's more or less something um, of the past, and I'll explain why, but mostly it has to do with stress um, and temperature dependencies when it's especially hot in temperature. Um, and I'm not telling you what methods to use. You can use whatever you're comfortable with. I'm just giving you, I tend to be scientific based. I'm using data that I've collected from research and scientists all over the world based on what their recommended best practices are. I try to follow best practices. Um, so, next slide please. So, a typical expression of mites as a population is, as, is, is expressed as a percentage. So if you take a 300B sample, which is the half cup more or less that you take a sample of in the alcohol wash that you're familiar with, this is one I made out of jars, but you can make them out of peanut butter, whatever, it's basically a top chamber, a bottom chamber, and a screen. Um, so you effectively take a half a cup of bees, dump them in, do your thing, and if you're taking a 300B sample, you divide by three. Um, you want to get a percentage expressed as how many bees out of 100, not out of 300. Right. So with good forage and active brood rearing, a colony can tolerate two mites per 100 bees. That's 2%. 2%. Under favorable conditions, a healthy colony could tolerate up to five mites per 100, but your colony will not be developing to full potential. Um, so by late summer and early fall, the mite population explodes in proportion to shrinking colony population. So you can have up to 50% of the mites hidden in the brood forced onto the adults. Everybody with me? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably stuff you guys already know, but I just want to be sure. Um, so once infestation reaches 20 out of 100, you get the telltale uh, PMS, parasitic mite syndrome. And that's inevitably going to lead to your collapse. Mm -hmm. um, now, just a rule of thumb, the numbers, the rate roughly doubles each month. So if it's 1% early, uh, 2 to 3% late in the summer, that means by the time you enter winter, you're probably going to have more than 5 out of 100, and that's a prescription that you're probably not going to be surviving. Next slide, please. So sugar shake, just briefly, I tend to not recommend it. It has a 70% recovery, but it's very brutal on the bees, especially in hot weather. And we're measuring mites often in the hot weather. There's a poor recovery rate. It's also easy to <coughs> overlook the infestation, and you gotta shake really hard. And the shaking really hard can be pretty brutal. Next slide, please. Um, sticky board, not to be confused. Sticky board is when you put the board <coughs> underneath. It's okay for tracking the efficacy of the treatment but it's not to take a census count of how many mites you have right now. So you look at how many mites are falling onto the board to see how effective your treatment was of Apivar mite away, whatever you're using. So if, for example, you count 50 or 60 within a 24-hour period in the autumn, that's a reasonable threshold to indicate um, a high effectiveness rate um, of your particular treatment method. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about now, but I want to be sure that Next slide, that we all understand that. Um, so the company that I'm dealing with is called Swienti. I contacted uh, the headquarters in Denmark out of the blue um, last summer and started asking them questions because at the EAS um, conference, I bought one of their units and just was determined to figure out, is this any good? Is it a joke? Is it effective? How does it work? And basically, you get what is effectively a modified pocket size tube inflator for a bicycle with a special stainless steel <coughs> syringe tip that screws onto it. And you use a 16 gram uh, CO2 cartridge, which is very common. You get it at Amazon or at a bike shop. You screw it in there, and then you squirt the CO2 through a hole here into the upper chamber. And I'm gonna break that down in a little bit, but that's basically what's going on. So they specialize, have you heard of Swienti? They specialize in honey, honey collection equipment, really expensive, really high quality, commercial, well-designed, well-engineered equipment. 
for commercial beekeepers. Really good stuff. So um, after I spoke to them, I realized that a German guy came to them and said, hey, you want to sell this in your catalog? I think it's pretty cool. No one had tested it. They had no idea. They threw it in their catalog. Mm -hmm. They had no idea how effective it was. So um, we spoke to Dr. Buechler, and he confirmed that, in fact, um, no one had really done the research. He just basically uh, sold the product license to them for manufacture. Um, so it was a concept and not, next slide please, and not scientifically tested. So Charlie, Adele, and I took it upon ourselves to do some scientific testing. Um, forget that, next slide please. That's a link to the YouTube <coughs> video that the Danes put up to show how to use it, but I don't think it's a really good video. Um, so we came up with parameters to field test the comparative efficacy of this Swanty system to the alcohol system. And we took samples in October and November and compared them, and we got some pretty encouraging results. Um, next slide, please. So this is simply a lucite or plexiglass tube with red lines on it to indicate where the position of this removable disc with holes should be, and what the top line of the bees that you put in here should be, with a lid to close off the lower chamber and a lid to close off the upper chamber. So technically, you take a third of a cup of bees, carefully put them in here. Before you cover too quickly, let the older bees fly away, because you really want the younger bees that are the target. Um, and then you squirt anywhere from five to 10 seconds, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it puts the bees to sleep. Then you wait 10 seconds, then you shake it gently, kind of like this. You're not going crazy like with alcohol um, or sugar. <clears throat> and then the mites will be released from the, from the carbon dioxide, just like the bees will be put to sleep, and the mites will fall into the bottom. Um, so just a sidebar, um, we talk about half cup scoops and third cup scoops. The one thing that we found that's a little bit unsettling is that on um, our control for alcohol wash, when we took a half cup scoop, we literally counted all the bees and came up with over 500 bees. Mm -hmm. So it occurred to us with our scientific analysis that it made a whole lot more sense to weigh the bees. And this is, this is a scale I use in my business. It's possibly a little bit overkill. But I'm looking for a relatively inexpensive scale that would have resolution up to a tenth of a gram for maybe 50 to 75 bucks, where you can weigh the bees. Um, it makes a huge difference. If you think about doing a mite count on what you think is right. 300 bees and it's five or 600 bees, your numbers are useless. Right, it's huge. So, I'm an advocate of giving up on the scoop method and getting taking it to the next level if you're serious about your bees. Yes? How much do 200 bees weigh? Um, 200 <laughs> bees weighs just uh, under 25 grams on average. Yeah. It, do, it does, but it's going to be a half a gram to a gram, whether it's carnioli. I have, uh, do you have, are your uh, carnioli? Mine are mutts. They're half Italian, half carnelian. Yeah, and we on average got 25.4 grams, I think, for, for, uh, for the alcohol wash, you're using 300 bees. For the CO2, you're using 200 bees. Mm -hmm. So, uh, tell, him, tell him how many bees we did for a few samples, and what was the standard deviation? We were like right at 197 or whatever it was. Yeah, we were, our statistical results were extremely solid. And we came up um, with a couple distinct reasons why we were beginning to prefer CO2 for alcohol, putting aside the fact that alcohol kills them and yes. CO2 doesn't and the risk of throwing the queen in is significant for those of you who might be beginners and like somehow not be careful and not check twice and throw the queen in. Um, what, what happens um, with the alcohol wash, think about it, and I encourage you to go to scientificbeekeeping.com and look at what Randy Oliver, who has done some of this um, development um, for the public, he does it for the public, um, 
of the alcohol wash receptacles is when you're shaking vigorously with alcohol, think about it. For every mite that you're releasing on the downstroke, on the upstroke, <laughs> they're, jumping up. they're jumping back up again and possibly through the screen to where they can't work their way back down again. So it's actually with 85% efficacy, um, there are problems with that. Um, Randy has devised a way that's probably 90% effective where you use two clear plastic solo cups and create a siphon and the upstroke doesn't become a problem. Um, so on the CO2 method, um, basically uh, the problems with this design, which is what, we're, what we wound up focusing on, was we determined that this was approximately 70% effective as confirmed by Randy Oliver in the article you can see in this month's American uh, Bee Journal, uh, that the bees get caught in some of the rim, the perimeter lining of the plastic that holds the disc in place, so, and not all of the mites will fall down into the plastic lid, so you have to really carefully inspect and you might find some mites that didn't fall to the bottom. So, you'll get a higher percentage efficacy um, if you don't rely solely on the mites that made their way to this bottom lid. You've got to look in there. How was the atmosphere being displaced in that chamber? When you would spray in CO2? Well, the CO2... It's pressurizing the whole thing? It's, 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 yeah, and you've got to be careful because it comes out cold, so hmm. you, you want to... The hole is up here on purpose so you're not super chilling the bees. Hmm. Um, but yeah, this hole is probably four times larger than the, the syringe that goes in there. So there's an exchange going on. And basically, if you blow it too hard, these will kind of bellow. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Yeah, but it won't blow them off. Okay. Um, uh, you're, pulling, you're putting in quite a lot of CO2, though. Yeah, we wound up using a lot more than Swanty recommends. And then when you read Randy's article, you'll find that as opposed to the five seconds they recommend, he got a really good distribution with 10 seconds. And 10 seconds um, can almost exhaust a 16, um, the, the, the size 16 gram cartridge. But the cartridges are not that expensive. Um, I got like 36 of them at Amazon for maybe 18 bucks. Yes? Could you weigh your apparatus without these? And then weigh it? You tear everything, sure, you tear it to zero. And, and, yeah. then, and, then, and then weigh it with these and then calculate the mass of bees rather than the number of bees as a more easier to measure? Well, once we, deter once we went through the dirty work of determining approximately how many bees comprise 200 bees, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. That's why I recommend using the scale. So to be clear, you take your scale, you turn it on with the lid on and everything in place and nothing else, you tear it to zero. Then I like to use a relatively deep Rubbermaid style tub. And if any of you are bakers, I'm a baker. Um, I love using this, the Silpat mat. So I put this inside here. Um, I take my scoop and I put the bees on here and give the older bees time to fly away. What? Yeah, yeah. Me too. You don't want the older bees. No, I know, but they do they self-select of who flies away? Why the older bees will fly away. Oh. The younger ones won't. Oh, okay. They, yeah, they're foragers. Oh, okay. The younger ones are. Then you carefully yeah. dump these in here. And start taking your scale. Now, um, you can tear it with or without the lid, depending on whether you want to play this game or do it like that. And then once you get your weight. Put it like that. And then some smart owl asked me, and I think it's a great question. I had to pause for a second. What about the bees that are flying in midair that aren't? Um, <laughs> it's not really, it, it's not even a rounding error. Yeah. I thought that was a very cool question. Actually, the air that they're pushing down is adding to the. <laughs> yes. Is there a video available of the process? Yeah. If you go to, um, if you Google, um, Swienty, S-W-I-E-N-T-Y, 
CO2 or carbon dioxide might tester. There's a couple YouTubes that come up, but as I say, they're not really good quality. There's a German guy doing it. Yeah. One we'll shoot one. Yeah, we'll do one. We'll do one of those. Next couple weeks, we'll shoot. Yeah, we're going to be doing it the next couple weeks. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, just some techniques to refresh what you might already know. It's best to shake a frame from open brood with bee bread. The Varroa preferred nurse bees need a steady diet of bee bread. So, the half scoop for alcohol, the third scoop, we'd rather use a scale. Um, next slide, please. Um, so, Randy Oliver has more or less validated what we determined was perhaps a 70% capture rate. There are design shortcomings that I mentioned to you. Um, we're not sure how effective CO2 is as a releasing agent, but it's noteworthy that all, that all the uh, apicultural scientific bee labs, they're using CO2 for queen manipulations. Mm -hmm. So CO2 is commonly used and it's, it's as good as I know. And it's cheap. Uh, next slide, please. So Randy found that 10 seconds will give 40%. 20 seconds will, I was actually off. 20 seconds will give 70%. He found an inconsistency that 30 seconds gives 58%, but he's not sure why. We don't know if there was another problem. Um, so my recommendation after talking to Randy is if you see the recommendation, if you're dealing with something that's 85% effective, or you're dealing with something that's 70% effective, take the inverse of that and use that as a factor to multiply it up, and that'll give you a pretty good idea. So we stand by the accuracy of 70% effectiveness as this design stands now, before we improve it. Just as we stand by the efficacy um, of these alcohol washes at 85%. So you take, um, you see the math there, 1 divided by 0.7 is 1.43. 0.7 is 70%. So 1.43 is your factor. So multiply your capture by 1.43. And for alcohol, multiply it by 1.18. This is just my way of saying, go with what you got. And this will give you an act. So you're basically grossing up for uh, to make up for the other than perfect efficacy of the device. Um, <coughs> uh, okay, and that's it. Questions, please. I got three more. The other thing about this is a good thing is if you take two samples of brood nest. I'm sorry, Kevin. I'm probably walking up. You're good. At one spot, at one part of the brood nest, and another at another part of the brood nest, you've got two measures within the same hive and the same brood nest then they come out remarkably, whatever they are, just take the average of the numbers. But then you've got a much more accurate device. And you're not killing bees.